Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I don't know if y'all saw the video where I used the IOD spray stamp to create this beautiful gallery, gallery wall for my dining room, but ever since then I have just been thinking of different things that I could do with this stamp. So in today's video, I decided to do five projects using the IOD Sprig stamp. And y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to the end of this video because there will be a giveaway. Now let's get started on these projects. Someone gave me a few pieces of slate for free and I thought they'd be the perfect background to put a stamp on. So I just made an arrangement with three of the IOD stamps and now I'm just taking a pencil and kind of outlining where I want my background to be. Then I'm going to take my thin mount and just put the stamps on there. That way they stay in an exact position that I want them to be in. I'm going to paint my background using IOD White Swan. And I'm just going to go in and paint where I put my pencil marks. And I'm just doing one good coat of paint on here because I'm going to go back and distress it using a combination of sandpaper and a baby wipe. I just want to bring back a little bit of that slate through. I'm going to add IOD ink to my stamp. It is in the color New Grass, which I think is the perfect color to go with these stamps. I added a smaller thin mount to the bottom. That way the stamp would not get on to my piece of slate. And once they're inked up, I'm just going to apply the stamps to the background that I created. And I just love how dainty and pretty these little stamps are. This piece of slate already had two holes at the top, so I'm just gonna add a little jute twine so that way it can be hung on the wall. I think this would also look great on a scrap piece of wood, a tray, a breadboard, anything you have laying around that just needs a little bit of an extra detail. I purchased this piece for $1 at the thrift store. I just liked how long and skinny it was. I'm gonna be using the baking soda paint mixture on here. I'm gonna be using a black color. It's a Kilts brand chalk paint and it's called Poppy Seed. And I'm gonna do two coats of the chalk paint with the baking soda to have full coverage on this piece. Once my paint was dry, I did take it outside and spray it with a coat of Rust-Oleum sealer before moving on to this next step because I did not want my paint to come off. So I'm taking the Waverly Antiquing Wax and I'm putting a little bit of water on it and I am just rubbing it on my black bucket and then I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe it off. This will give the bucket a little bit more of an aged look and really bring out some of that texture that we just created with the baking soda and the paint mixture. Next, I'm gonna take a small piece of drop cloth that I've already cut to the size that I thought would look good on this particular bucket. And I'm taking one of the IOD sprig stamp and the IOD black ink, and I am just going to stamp this piece of drop cloth. And then I'm gonna take my wet brush from the Waverly Antiquing Wax and just antique the edges of this drop cloth. Once it is dry, I'm going to glue it onto my bucket. And once it was glued onto my bucket, I felt like it needed a little something more. So I took the tops of some thumbtacks and just also glued them to my canvas. And I think that added a little extra detail that this bucket needed. This is a great way to add a cute vintage looking label to any piece. I think even on a piece of wood or a basket, this will look good and I feel like a lot of the IOD stamps will look great turned into little labels. I've had this idea in my head for a while so I really wanted to try it out. However, this is the only candlestick I had in my stash. So I decided to go ahead and make it work. So I'm just taking some painter's tape and covering the center of the candlestick because I need the middle to be solid so if you have a solid candlestick that would be ideal for this particular project 
Now I'm gonna take the IOD air dry clay and just cover the entire candlestick. I'm gonna cover the middle, I'm gonna cover the top, and I'm gonna cover the bottom. And it is pretty easy to spread out this clay just using your fingers, but if you feel like you need a little extra help, you can always add a little bit of water to your hands to help spread and smooth the clay. But I am definitely going for a handmade look here, so I do not want it to be perfect. The great thing about the IOD stamps is not only can you use it as a stamp with ink or paint, you can use it to make an impression in the IOD air dry clay. So I'm taking this sprig stamp, this is one of my favorite because it kind of fans out, and I'm just going to push it into my candlestick starting at the top and going down the bottom. And then once I have that first one on there, I'm gonna see where else on the candlestick, I want to make more impressions. Now you want, if you end up using water on your clay, you wanna make sure it's a little bit dry, but you don't wanna wait till your clay is too dry because you wanna make sure you get a nice, good impression while the clay is still kind of soft. My clay has been drying for a few hours at this point and it has a few cracks in it. That is totally normal and I'm going for the handmade look so I am not worried about it. But just to make sure this whole piece stays together, I decided to go ahead and add a layer of Mod Podge on my piece. So I'm gonna put one coat of Mod Podge and let it dry. Then I painted it with a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color Celery. I thought this would be the absolute perfect color for this piece. Now when I painted on the Mod Podge and I painted on the chalk paint, I went really thin because I did not want to fill in the details of the stamp. So I just did one coat of the color Celery and just kind of added a little more paint here and there as I needed it for full coverage. Now we wanna bring back all the details of that beautiful sprig stamp. So I'm applying some white wax to, in, to the entire candlestick. And you really wanna make sure you get the white wax in all those details. And then I'm going to go over it lightly with a paper towel, making sure that all my white wax stays in the details of the stamp. If you are not into the handmade pottery look, then this may not be the project for you, but these turned out exactly the way that I wanted them to, and it did not take that much clay to cover these two candlesticks. I love collecting vintage books and I sell them in groups of three. However, this color palette just not, has not sold and I've had these books forever. So we are gonna turn them into the easiest, cutest book stack you have ever made. You're gonna take an X-Acto knife and you just want to cut off the top part edge. Now I've only tried this with vintage books. I'm not sure what the binding looks like on newer books underneath, but for these old vintage books, this is what the binding looks like when you take it off, and I just love the texture that comes with these books. I'm gonna also keep the hardbacks that came off of these books, cause I'm thinking these might work great for a Christmas DIY in the future. I love the texture and color on here. I picked out one IOD sprig stamp to use for this project. I'm going to use the new grass ink for the stem on this piece and I want to use purple for the top. Now I was a little lazy here and used a foam brush instead of a brayer. So the ink was a little bit thick and uneven. If you don't want to ha that to happen, I highly suggest using a brayer. I should have took the time to do that. Then these stamps would have came out just a little bit cleaner at the top where I put the purple, but I'm going to put two sprig stamp on the top of this book stack and it just adds to the vintage look of these. I love how this book stack came out. It was so quick and easy and it is the perfect accessory for your vintage farmhouse decor. I wanted to create a sign for my new home, so I just put together three fence boards 
that were cut to 11 inches each. And I want to put a quote on it, something that I really love to have in my house. So in order to put this quote onto the wood, I printed out the quote on paper and I'm going to use carbon paper to transfer it to my wood. And then I'm going to use a fine point painter's pen and go over the type that I just transferred onto the wood. Next, I'm going to take several of the sprig stamps just to accessorize this wood. I kind of want it to like go around the quote and I do want it in the new grass color. So that's what I'm going to be using to add a little bit of color to this piece. So I'm gonna add the ink and just put the stamp on. I'm gonna do the corners first and then decide where else and what stamps that I want to use. And then once it's done, I'm gonna take the sign back in my shop and add a natural wood frame to it. Stamps are a great way to accessorize pieces of art you already have, or like me, pieces of art that you want to create. I think these are the perfect complement to the quote that I decided to put on the sign, and I think it's going to look great in my new house. I purchased this picture at the thrift store for a dollar. I just cannot pass up a picture for a dollar because they look so good when they are upcycled. I'm gonna be painting this picture with Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. I'm gonna add two coats of paint on here for full coverage and I did not add baking soda or anything. I just use the chalk paint. I wanna create a clay label for this picture. So with painter's tape on a piece of wax paper, I just measured out the size I wanted the label to be and then I pushed some IOD air dry clay onto that area. I apologize y'all, apparently I did not film all these steps but I just cut off the excess clay to create some clean edges and then I stamped the flower stamp into the clay just like I had done on the candle holder. Then I put plastic wrap on my pitcher and then applied the clay on top of it and let it dry. That way it would dry to the curved surface of the pitcher. I let it dry for a couple of hours and then I used my Gorilla Glue Clear Grip to glue my clay label to my painted pitcher. I love the way that this is looking, but I decided to bring the two pieces together by applying white wax to the entire piece. So I put it on my clay label with the floral impression and I put it on the pitcher. So you just apply the wax and then you go with a paper towel or a lint free rag and wipe it off. Now, if you wanted to bring out even more detail, you could go back and add antiquing wax, but I wanted to keep this piece light and bright. So I just decided to go just with the white wax and I really like the way this piece looks. Just like you can create a label using fabric, or vintage paper and stamps, you can do the same thing with clay and using the stamps to make an impression. I love the vintage, unique look of this label. All right guys, what did y'all think about those projects? As always, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite. So the candlesticks, I had confidence that those are gonna turn out good, I love them, but raise your hand if you were like, no girl, this is not gonna work out. I know it seemed kind of sketchy at the beginning, but I love, I love how those turned out. Now, the one that surprised me was the slate. I did not realize I was gonna love it as much as I did, and I have a few pieces of slate left, so I think I'm gonna do that on all of them because I think it's gonna be a great seller, and it was a really quick and easy project. Now for the giveaway. Who wants to win their very own IOD sprig stamp? So I actually have two of these to give away. So to enter, all you have to do is like this video, leave a comment, share it, and I will announce the winner in my next video. So I guess you gotta watch that one too. <laughs> all right guys, y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all next time. Thanks for watching and give this video a big